Welcome to the Plate Doctor channel. Today we have a PV base on the bench. Customer says he bought it from Guitar Center and he tried it out in the store and it seemed to work and by the time he brought it home he plugged it in and he said all that he got was static. So we're gonna see if we can figure out what's wrong with it. Here we're at 42 volts and I'm pulling about a half amp of current. I got a pretty good buzz going on so I'm guessing some filter caps are probably at fault. So let's see what's going on inside. So it turns out there's a bunch of acorns inside here, so something must have been using this as a nest at some point, or it was stored in a barn or something like that. So I guess the first thing I'm going to want to do is check these capacitors, which are probably bad. So I'm just going to make sure there's no voltage on them. So my little multifunction tester is telling me that these 10,000 microfarad capacitors are reading at 12 millifarads, which is 1,200 microfarads, which is just slightly over 20%. I'm going to check these diodes. The uh, diodes are checking out okay. I think the next thing I may want to check is the grounding. Again, it looks like this thing may have been stored in a barn or something, and the grounds are connected with rivets, and it's possible that some corrosion has caused some issues there. Grounding seems to be okay, so I think I'm going to plug it in and put my scope on the output and see if we can figure out where the hum is coming from. So you can see on my scope... when something's dirty. So before I go any further, I'm gonna clean all the potentiometers with the oxit and the contacts on these. So here I am with this PV base. I changed out all the electrolytic caps and I'm about to power it on.
I got 10 new alt stock replacement output transistors at a good price. I only need 8, so I'm going to match up the 8 best out of these 10. And I'll probably use the 2 best as the buffers and the other 6 as the power transistors. <laughs> So here I am with the PV base. The power amp section seems to be working. I was having oscillation problems with uh, the front end of this channel over here, the effects channel that has fuzz and distortion. I ended up taking this transistor out to test it and I found that the base lead was actually broken off. So I pulled it out and tested it with the transistor tester and it seems to test okay. So when I put it back in, the oscillation stopped. That channel also isn't working anymore, but the other channel is working. So I've got a one kilohertz signal coming into the input of this channel and I'm turning it up and you can see I have the scope hooked to the output and I'm getting signal to the output. I've got about 107 watts into my dummy load right now and the wave looks pretty good. That's pushing about 160 four watts. Now I'm plugged into channel two and the gain is all the way up so you can see we have a problem now. So I have a schematic here with voltage references for the transistors in the front end. And the first three transistors on both channels seems to be really close to the same up until it gets up to this coupling capacitor here and here. So if we check the voltage on the collector of this one We've got 20.37 and the collector over here, 20.7. We check the base and got 13.8. Over here, I've got 13.6. The emitter, I've got 13.7. And the emitter here, I've got about 20 volts. According to my schematic, the voltage on the emitter here should be 13.4 volts and we're too high. So we must have a so we must have a faulty component somewhere. So here I'm injecting a signal to the negative side of this coupling cap that separates the first stage from the intermediate gain amp on the schematic right here. So our problem is obviously somewhere on this side. Here I have a nice cheap little curve tracer that's also an oscilloscope and a harmonic distortion meter and signal generator. It's a neat little device. This is a scope and this is an add-on curve tracer and I'm going to use this to compare both first stages on each side to see if I can find the fault. So here on the curve tracer you can see this shape here on the channel that works between collector and emitter. 
if you can see something completely different from collector to emitter. And I have two more yellow ones here, which should be the same as these two yellow ones. So let's check those also. You can see on this one, it looks more similar to this one. And you can see this one also looks similar to these two. And this one looks way different. So all three of these transistors have a different curve from these three. So I'm gonna pull all three of these and test them. Here I have the PNP transistor. The other two NPNs tested good. My meter won't even test this transistor. So here I have it on ohms. So one ohm, that's a short. Three ohms, three ohms, one ohm, three ohms, three ohms. So I've tested every lead in every direction and everywhere is three ohms or less. So we'll need a new PNP transistor. So here I am with the PV base all finished up. When it came in, it desperately needed a new power cord. And it oscillated like crazy when you turned it on. It just squealed. So what I ended up doing was replacing all the electrolytic capacitors. I changed all the two microfarad electrolytic capacitors with film capacitors, cleaned all the potentiometers. I replaced the output transistors with new old stock transistors and replaced the driver transistors. Also, I ended up changing a couple components here in the front end of the effects channel to help get rid of the oscillations that were happening. And overall, it sounds pretty good now. This thing should operate like brand new for another 40 or 50 years. I also changed the capacitors here on the power switch to safety rated capacitors. One of the capacitors that used to be there just kind of goes crazy on my, on my component tracer. So it's better to have safety capacitors there. 